What's going on, everyone? So, the Los Angeles Lakers took on the Phoenix Suns. Man, it's crazy how many times the Lakers got to play the Phoenix Suns in the month of October. Four times in total. They have two games coming up in the first five of the season. Uh, now, this was a game without Rui Hachimura, without LeBron James uh, in the fold. And you went with Cam Reddish and Max Christie into the starting unit. Uh, and the Lakers still did a good job of kind of holding their own. Uh, did a good job of having a bit of a back and forth game, obviously without two of your five starters and Phoenix had all of their guys. Uh, they started Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, uh, Kevin Durant, Tyus Jones, and Nurk. Um, no Lakers were able to, to continue to fight up until, of course, you know, they, they decided to go with the G league guys and all that stuff. Uh, but Anthony Davis continues to impress, continues to just be fantastic. Uh, he had, uh, also made a handful of threes. I don't really like him taking nine or ten threes. It's preseason. So, you know, sure, get some shots up, have some fun with it, especially because he was hitting them, right, at a 40% clip or over 40% clip. Um, but, you know, I'd like to see him be as close to the basket. I mean, literally half of his uh, made shots were threes. Uh, you know, I don't mind him taking, you know, a handful throughout the flow of the game, but I just I don't want it to become a habit where it's like, hey, AD, you need to take ten threes a game. Uh, you know, he's just so skilled, so gifted around the rim and in that 15 in, uh, allow him to continue to play that, allow him to continue to be in that in the fold. Um, Cam Reddish, man, he's just like a three point shot away from being like a really solid player. Right? He was two of five from the floor, so 40% overall, but he's 0 of three from three. He had uh, four points, four rebounds, uh, but just his size, his length, the way he's able to disrupt stuff, uh, defensively be out there. It's just like, man, if he could just develop a, a consistent three, a consistent jumper, like Cam Reddish would be exactly what we need. As far as like that three and D guy goes, I, I still have a lot of like faith on Cam Reddish. He is still only 24 years old, but it just feels like he's more likely going to be out of the league at some point than he will be, uh, you know, actually stepping into that role. But man, if he could just, I'm not even saying lights out. I'm not even saying have him shoot. You know, 40 plus percent from three. He could just be like 36, 37 percent from three, like around league average. He'd be such a valuable piece uh, for the Lakers. But uh, Austin Reeves, this is the Austin Reeves that I've been talking about. This is the Austin Reeves that I want to see. Uh, still struggle to shoot the three ball, which I really wish he could just find his three point shot. Uh, it's a little frustrating that he just can't seem to knock down the three unless he's allowed to just like, you know, square up. And, and have, you know, can go make a sandwich, <laughs> right? Like get his hair done, all that stuff before the defender comes over. But hey, he's still struggling to shoot three, but I really loved his rebounding, really loved his aggression. He was incredibly aggressive in this game, which is something that you love to see. Um, him just continuously being in attack mode when he was out there on the basketball court, particularly in that first half, um, you know, and his ability to, uh, get into the teeth of the defense, create contact, get to the foul line, right? Really push some pressure on the defense. Uh, and him on the defense side was doing a really good job as well. Um, you know, having Austin Reeves and seeing what he can do when he's on is what I really, you know, it's what I'm rooting for. You know, I've been critical of Austin Reeves, don't get me wrong, but it's warranted, right? Like he's had his troubles. He can't, he's still, as good as he was in this game, still can't shoot. Which is becoming a problem, which is becoming an issue, because we really need him to shoot and knock down the three. When his three-point shot is falling, it just opens everything else up. It just makes things so much easier for him, because now teams can't just pack the paint or give him space or kind of let him shoot or whatever, where he has to work twice as hard at times when his three-point shot is falling, right? Hit an early one, and all of a sudden, they're stepping out to try to go and contest it, and he's, you know, beating guys, attacking the closeout, getting to the teeth of the defense. He's really able to thrive. But then as soon as that three-point shot starts cooling off, all of a sudden, you know, they're kind of giving space and not letting him beat you because it's like, well, we'll take our chances on a guy that's shooting 20% from three rather than, you know, go against a guy that is just able to just get into the mid-range and just light us up, All right? So like to see uh, Austin Reeves hopefully get some reps up. Um you know, I, I almost want to see him next game, especially if they don't play AD or anything, and it's kind of just like, you know, another game out there. Like, just take, like, 10 threes. Just start getting some reps up or something. Right? Because, like, I, 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 like, how else do you fix his three-point shot? 
if he can fix his three, then that would just be that would be so convenient for the. And I'm not even talking about just shooting the lights out. I know last year people go, well, he was 37 percent for three. Yeah, but if you actually watched the games, if you actually watched his season, he averaged that. He didn't. It wasn't that. That was him game in and game out. Right? The difference between a guy who you know one month shooting 20 percent, the next month shooting 40 percent, like. Or game in and get one game he's shooting forty percent, next game he's shooting, you know, fifteen percent. There's a big difference between that rather than a guy that you know is he's just thirty seven percent game in and game out, game in and game out. Yeah, he has the the random outlier game where he's, you know, eight of nine, and then he has the the random outlier game where he's one of nine. Right, it, it happens. Like that's fine, but consistency is a big thing with Austin Reeves that I hope he gets to this year. But I do, I like his defense. And I really like um, what we're seeing from him as far as his aggression and not settling and, and being aggressive, attacking uh, opposing teams. I hope that that continues. I hope that he keeps that up uh, as we continue to proceed uh, throughout into the regular season. Um, but outside of that, you know, it, it was it got nice little contributions from several guys like Gabe Vincent oh, it was solid. Not great, but just solid. Kind of gave you the things that you wanted to see from him. Um, Dalton Connect was was knocking down some shots, was hitting some jumpers, doing his thing. Uh, he, he again got into double figures. Max Christie uh, hit some shots, played some defense. He had some great defensive sequences. I really like that Max Christie does like everything with two hands. Like I love that he just like everything he does, he does with two hands, which is like basic fundamentals that they teach you. But yet, so many NBA players want to do everything with one hand. Right? Even when he goes up to attack and be aggressive, he goes up to attack with two hands. I just love it. Rebounds, all of it. Um, D'Angelo Russell's got to find his shot. He started off looking pretty good. Um, and then just started just missing everything. Um, you know, got to knock down the three ball with consistency. I, again, I'm not panic mode for D'Lo yet from three, just because we saw what he could do last year, right? Like, I talk about with, with Reeves. So many people are like, no, oh, you're, you're being too critical with Reeves, just preseason, just preseason. But it wasn't just preseason, right? Like, if it was just preseason, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. I would defend him. Like, I've always, all season last year, I defended Austin Reeves. Even when I shouldn't have defended Austin Reeves, I was still defending Austin Reeves. Because I thought it was warranted. I thought, you know, it was like, well, look at what his track record shows. Look at what his track record shows. Well, now you look at, it's not just preseason. It was the playoffs. He shot 28% from three. It was, again, the inconsistencies all season long. It's not just preseason. Where D'Lo, from three, yes, it's been concerning the last game, few games. He's been kind of hot and cold from three. But we saw him an entire season be able to knock down the three ball with consistency and at a high volume, right? He's not getting the volume in preseason, which is fine. You know, you, you don't really expect that in preseason. He's not playing as many minutes and getting as many attempts up. But, you know, if it's something that becomes a problem or it's something that we need to talk about at some point, then we'll definitely talk about it. It's definitely something I'm not going to be like, oh, well, D'Lo. No, I mean, if D'Lo is struggling, isn't able to find his three-point shot, then we're definitely going to have to talk about it. But I do like... um Again, his playmaking, um, just need to see him find a shot. He was aggressive in spots, too. Just couldn't couldn't really find the bottom of the net. Uh, but overall, you know, this is this is a team that Phoenix has been a good matchup for us. They really do. I think our size and stuff is just trouble for Phoenix. Like, Phoenix just lacks size, and they don't have defense. So they can't defend. Lakers get whatever they want, especially when they're moving the basketball. Lakers, with LeBron James and Rui Hachimura, probably blow Phoenix out again. I mean, we saw that the previous time, um, the last day. And then once all the starters got out and stuff and it was G League team, Phoenix was able to, to get back in it and win the game. But, like, when you looked at our starters, you know, Rui was having himself a field day uh, with, with Phoenix. And uh, several other Laker guys were able to just dominate this team. Because, again, they just I think they just have a problem with our size and whatnot, right? Like, so you, you go back to the previous Suns game, um, you have D'Lo, who had a much better game. He shot 50% that game. But Rui shot 6 of 8, right? Had 13 points and 8 rebounds uh, against Phoenix. Because, again, he just got the size, the strength, the physicality. Um, Anthony Davis gave you 17 on 7 to 10 from the floor uh, with 8 rebounds in 18 minutes. LeBron had 19, 5, and 4. 
in 16 minutes, 8 of 12 from the floor and 2 of 3 from 3, right? Like, Rui and LeBron just dominated Phoenix. Because, again, they don't have anybody that can really match up with them. They don't have anyone that has their size, their strength, their physicality, which becomes a problem for them. So I actually think that the Lakers, I don't know if you're going to be able to beat them twice in a three-game period. I mean, you literally play Phoenix twice in three days. You play them on the 25th, and then you you play Sacramento off of a back-to-back, and then you play Phoenix again on the 28th. Right, first one is in LA, second one is in Phoenix. So, you know, it is one of those questions where it's like, can the Lakers do that twice? Beat them twice? I wouldn't be shocked if they did. I, I think I really do think Phoenix is a really good matchup for the Lakers. Obviously, they have Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker who can just go off at any point. But still, I like I like the matchup. I like our size advantage. Um, you know, our ability to basically get whatever we want. But we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Obviously, again, we have. Uh, one more game left tomorrow. I'm curious to see who actually plays that game. Anthony Davis, I imagine, doesn't play. LeBron, maybe, right? Do they go without AD and rest LeBron and, and Reeves? Or, uh, sorry, rest AD and Reeves and go with LeBron and Rui back, possibly. But, uh, you know, however it plays out, you know, you, you again, you just want to finish on a high note. You want to work on the things that you need to work on uh, and hopefully continue to to progress season after season, or uh, game after game into the season. Uh, But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel with your thoughts? Um, Do you think that, like, yeah, hey, this was a solid game. Lakers were in it pretty much start to finish uh, without two of their starters. Austin Reeves was aggressive, looked good. Anthony Davis was dominant. Um, Again, I feel whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not. If you enjoy these types of videos, truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.